Welcome to Firearms of America. Today, as you guys can see, I have another pair of boots from Irish Setter. And these are Irish Setter. Big game hunt. Hunting boots. Yes, and if they do look familiar, that is because this is actually the upgraded, not by a lot, by a little bit, but still upgraded version of the very popular Irish Setter Vapor Track, which I actually reviewed on the channel about a year ago. So, what changed in this boot? Well, really not that much. If you're wondering, there are a few leather pieces added here and there for additional durability. There is a harder rubber that is used on the outsole to last longer because there were some quality issues with the vapor track with the original vapor track so this is the upgraded version i'm not sure why they didn't just call it vapor track 2.0 but this is big game hunt all right if you don't have time to watch the whole 10 15 minutes of the review let me tell you this boots i i really like the vapor track i really really like them they are very comfortable um surprisingly lightweight for the all the protection that they provide and for um, obviously the size of the shaft of course the full-size boot very comfortable uh, I do like all of the protection that they implemented here they are waterproof they do run true to the size overall I am impressed so if you're looking at them get them you're not going to be disappointed but if you do have time to watch the whole review let's get into it as some of you already know this review specifically for my ultimate survival boot section Imagine the situation, you were wearing these boots. For example, you were hiding, hiking, not hiding, hunting, hunting, you were hunting. And something terribly bad happened and you somehow found out about it, being in the middle of the woods or whatever you're hunting, right? 2020 has been pretty eventful, so, you know, use your imagination, right, for a survival situation. And you had to hang out in the woods for days, you had to run, you had to hike for extended periods of, you know, distance of crazy distance 10 20 miles a day and then climb and then do whatever is necessary to survive right in these boots would they contribute to your survival or would they not well how do we make the judgment we're in the judgment based on eight different criteria let's get started criteria number one of course the comfort level now in order to test the comfort level of all the boots on this channel i do a three mile run and then a five mile walk of course for boots like these hunting boots or everyday boots uh, maybe even hiking boots it's a little weird to run in general because the boots are not designed to be run in unless they're tactical or military obviously uh, but but nevertheless it allows me to make a fair judgment for all of the boots because I test them equally the same exact tests for all of the boots on this channel and let me tell you, like I said, overall, I am very, very happy and very impressed with the comfort level of these boots. And there are a few factors that, of course, contribute to the comfort level. Let's get the first one out of the way. One of the most important ones, of course, the weight. Obviously, the heavier the boot, the harder it is to run, the harder it is to walk for extended periods of time. And these are, this is, by the way, the size 10, 19.8, which is... Let me tell you guys, if you have been watching my reviews, you know that I always say if you want something that does not really fatigue you that much uh, whenever you're running or walking for extended periods of time, you want something under 20 ounce. And the more it is under 20 ounce, the easier, the less of the restriction of the movement and running and moving fast and walking for very long distances the the better it is right um you want something under 20 ounces and this is this is just a little bit tiny little bit under 20 ounces so like i said i am very impressed for all of the protection that they provide for the size the weight i think is very impressive now irish setter which the they, they they're the part of the red wing shoes um they did excellent job whenever it comes to weight but there are a few other things that contribute to the comfort level. Let's let's keep going. Uh, there is this excellent, excellent inner sole. Let me take it out so you can see it. It's really nothing crazy about it. It's somewhat basic, but there is a good heel bed, 
which I do like. There isn't much in the arch support, but still there is some, so it's pretty good. And of course, the cushioning in it, I do like it a lot. It feels very nice and jelly, especially here at the heel part of it. So this definitely helps to take off the impact, especially whenever you are running. You know, if you're putting too much stress on your ankles, on your knees, this helps a lot. And a few factors, a few other factors that contribute to the comfort level, of course, the inside cushioning, which is not just your basic everyday cushioning. This is actually a sand band cushioning, which um, if you are, you know, in a wet, somewhat like a Florida type over here, you know, it's, you know we have swamps everywhere. So it's wet, it's very humid and uh, your feet sweat because it's hot. This bands the sand yes pretty good now um another thing that contributes to the comfort level a lot is the cushioning that um irish setter implemented on the inside of the toe box the toe itself is fairly soft as you can see it does offer decent protection but it is on the softer side so definitely good for your comfort not that good for the protection but definitely good for the comfort and the inside there's cushioning it definitely helps with the comfort as well and the very final thing that i wanted to mention here whenever it comes to the comfort is the flexibility of the bottom sole which despite of how massive it looks it actually is very flexible so honestly great comfort level i if if i could give this boots a mark from zero to 10, it would definitely be a very solid nine out of 10. Very solid nine out of 10. All right, so let's move on to the proofing and protection. Now, I already mentioned, I think, I already mentioned that these are waterproof. They have the ultra dry waterproofing technology that is from Red Wing Shoes. Um, very good technology. I personally never had a problem with it, although I did have another pair. It was a work boot from Red Wing Shoes and they were leaking, but Red Wing Shoes, they are one of the best in the industry whenever it comes to the boots and stuff and they have a great warranty and even i believe it was it was way more than a year than i had the boots they actually replaced them for me for free yes for their newer model yeah so they, they are amazing whenever it comes to the warranty now let's talk a little bit about the uh proofing proofing uh, not the proofing sorry the protection proofing is they are waterproof yes that, that's all about that you can say the waterproofing. You, you see the gusted tongue over here, which gives you about, let's take a look, about just a little bit less than six inches of waterproofing you have in this boot. So pretty good. Now let's move on to the protection. Now I already mentioned that there is this leather piece on the front. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not the leather piece, the rubber piece on the front that goes over the toe. It's a softer type of rubber. It's not gonna give you sufficient protection from impact, but still pretty good. You know, if you are on a rocky road, whenever you're hunting and the rock falls, you know, not from too high, you know, it's not gonna damage your uh, toes, right? So it's so pretty good. Um, you also have, of course, your padding here, which is very, very sufficient padding for protection to protect your ankles on both of the sides. You also have a reinforced heel, which feels very good. This uh, rubber piece right here, it actually gives very good support as well, besides giving you some protection. Uh, let's move on to the criteria number three, which is the quality and the design features. Now, uh, Vapor Track, like I said, they are very, very popular boots uh, from Irish Setter. They had over 700 reviews um, on Amazon, almost five stars. These are the newer ones, so not many reviews yet, over 50 reviews and almost five stars. And I would definitely give them a very solid five star, um, even though there are a few things here and there that I am not a big fan of, which I'll mention later, but I would give them five star nevertheless, anyway. Um, but, but, they, uh, the Irish Setter, they definitely did improvements over the quality for these boots, so this is a definitely better purchase compared to the Vapor. Vapor track. Now let's move on to the design features. And here, usually, I talk about the lacing system. As you can see here, there's really nothing crazy about the lacing system. It utilizes just a regular um, holes in the leather right here, just four pairs of those. There is two pairs of closed hooks, and then there is one pair of open hooks, which I do like a lot. Allows you to release the tension fairly quickly, and of course, makes it easier to put on this booth and 
take them off. Now, uh, if you want, there should be a model with the BOA system, which I absolutely love. It obviously, it's gonna be more expensive than these ones, but probably $30, $40 more. BOA system is just excellent if you wanna take off and take put on boots very, very fast. I like it. Uh, but overall, I do like the slicing system. It's very straightforward. The strings are fairly thin, so they slide through the hooks. Fairly easy. Okay, let's move on to the criteria number four, which is the outsole traction and stability. And uh, as you can see, this outsole is uh, on the flatter side. And this, I think, is one of the things that Irish Setter could have done a better job with. Because it is on the flatter side, these boots do not perform as well on slippery wet surfaces, like for example, wet grass. Not very stable because there isn't really a lot of aggression for the boots to grip on this wet grass. And I test my boots, all of them, on the variety of different surfaces, starting from tarmac, asphalt, older asphalt, um, dry sand, wet sand, dry grass, wet grass, rocky road, trail surface, and of course, flat surface like marble and tile. And they perform very well on most of the stuff, except the wet grass. Now, if you are considering these boots for a winter situation, I would not recommend them, first of all, because they don't have any insulation. But one of the main reasons is because they would not be stable on snow or ice. Might be more or less okay on the snow, but on ice, they will be very slippery. Keep that in mind. Let's move on to the criterion number five, really quickly, temperature. I already briefly mentioned it. There is no insulation, so they might be okay for colder temperatures, especially if you implement some uh, insulated socks because they do have a lot of this padding and they are waterproof, but because the outsole is not very cold weather friendly, right, where there is snow and ice, it might not be a good choice for that. Keep that in mind, but in the hot weather, like here in Florida, for example, even running in this boot, I didn't really overheat, even though considering that they're waterproof, because usually waterproof boots, they don't have a very good breathability. These are pretty good overall. Plus, this sand band, it kind of prevents, kind of gives you that necessary ventilation for um, your skin, your feet to breathe, right? So I'm, I'm pretty heavy overall whenever it comes to this boots, you know, performance in the hot temperature. Let's move on to the criteria number six really quickly. The sizing, they are true to the size, like I said. I always recommend all my viewers to get half a size bigger. So if you're, let's say, nine and a half, get yourself a size 10 for a boot, whether it is hiking, hunting, tactical, whatever, just to give you a little bit of extra space in the toe box. It helps preventing unnecessary fatigue, especially if you are planning to travel for long distances or even run, right? Keep that in mind. Criteria number seven is the balance of application. So if this really was your ultimate survival boot, something bad happened, you were wearing it. Would this be a good boot to survive in? Well, I think it is a good option overall. I think it is a pretty good option. One of the reasons is because they're very, very comfortable. Excellent comfort. They do offer sufficient amount of protection. They are waterproof. The only thing is I wish they had a little bit more versatile, more versatility in the outsole, a little bit more aggression. And I think Irish Setter, they could have definitely implemented that aggression um, to give you, you know, to make these uh, more stable, give you more traction on the slippery surface like wet grass. Uh, but other than that, I think overall these boots are very good, especially if you're planning your survival in the woods and you're planning to be stealth, that is a <laughs> pretty good option because, you know, that's what they're designed for, to be stealth in the woods, right? So, but I mean, if you're just getting them for hunting, I think you're gonna like them overall. Just keep in mind, wet grass, uh, not very stable. And the very last criterion, criterion number eight, is of course the price. Now the price is currently $125 on Amazon. The link is in the description below if you wanna check it out. Depending on the color, there are a few color variations. Um, depending on the color, depending on the size, the price might be different. So keep that in mind if you wanna check it out. Check it, it's in, in, in the description, the link. Uh, I think it's a great price. Oh, and honestly, I think it's a great price for everything these boots do offer for all the features, for the comfort level, excellent price. Um, there isn't really a lot of, you know, competition out there, um, especially from as big of brands as 
Irish setter from Red Wing Shoes. It's just a great, great brand and their warranty and the, their quality control that is just really hard to find something in that price range. They will be going kind of head to head um, against this boot. So overall, I do like this boot a lot. Let me know guys in the comments below what you think about these boots. Would you consider them for hunting? Would you consider them for your ultimate survival situations? If you have any requests for reviews, drop them in the comments below. I always look out for those, put them on my to-do list. And if I come around those boots faster, I get them as a priority to review on this channel. Thank you very much guys for watching. This was Firearms of America. I'll see you guys in the next video.